Let's welcome your next act, Taniwa Malongi. Oh, yes. How are you guys doing? You guys okay? <laughs> Lovely. My name is Taniwa Malongi. Um, I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> Do you want to get off the wrong foot? I, uh, I, I know I sound posh. I will give you time to adjust. Uh, I'm still not used to it either. Uh, I don't understand my voice at all. I was born in Zimbabwe and I grew up in Wales. And yet, for some reason, I have the voice of colonial times. It's a very dumb way to talk. The reason why I sound like this, uh, when I first came to the UK, uh, I was about seven, eight years old, you know, I had a very thick African accent. And when I got here, my mother, she sat me down and she, she was like, you have to stop all that African shit, son, okay? <laughs> if you want to make money in the UK, you have to learn to talk posh. And she was right, because now I'm minted. <laughs> However, <laughs> now I live in one of the most dangerous boroughs in London with this voice. It is not ideal, my friends. <laughs> This is a very muggable personality to have in stabby ass Croydon, okay? It's not a joke. Because of my voice, my nickname at my local barbershop is White Boy. That's a fact. And it really hurts my feelings that they call me White Boy, quite frankly, because I am African and these cunts are English. Okay? The balls of these Englishmen to call an actual African white boy on a weekly basis. The other day, my barber, he tried to justify this to me. He was like, uh, yeah, Tadis, like, sometimes I feel like you don't act black enough. Do you know what I'm saying? I was like, my name is Tadiwa Mahlunge. How is that not black enough for you, James? <laughs> Fucking appalling. Um, but I'm actually in a very good mood right now. I had some uh, very good news happen quite recently. I just bought my first flat. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate you applauding, especially the millennials, because I know what it is. You know, like uh, on the outside, you're clapping and cheering, but on the inside, you're like, <laughs> I hope you die. <laughs> If you feel that way, don't worry, that's fine, because the flat is in Croydon, so I will. Uh, <laughs> death is not far away for young Tad. Uh, I don't give off the vibe of someone who survives Croydon, do I? My face is too friendly. Do you know what I, do you know what I look like? I look like a, you know that black kid from the front cover of a uni prospectus? <laughs> You know the one? <laughs> you know that friendly kid with an Asian girlfriend, like... <laughs> Every uni prospectus is either me or Richard Iwade. There's no other... There's no options. It's pretty unfortunate, you know? Uh, for a while, I thought I'd have to leave London, get out of the big city, you know, things are getting quite wild over there, you know? For a while, I thought I'd have to move back to my hometown. Now, I was born in Zimbabwe, I'm not going back there. I, uh, <laughs> I uh, grew up in Cardiff, but I spent my teenage years in a town called Stevenage. Anyone here heard of Stevenage? Yeah. Shithole. Uh, <laughs> utter shithole. To sum up Stevenage, the big claim to fame of the town, Stevenage is the teenage pregnancy capital of Europe. That's the big <laughs> claim to fame. And I didn't get laid. Do you know how that felt? <laughs> everybody was fucking everybody. <laughs> Do you know how it felt to lose my virginity at the age of 22? In Stevenage. To a 15 year old. It was horrible. <laughs> And she was gentle, she was like, I know it's your first time, don't worry. I'll take care of you. It's the kind of love and attention you only get from a mother of three. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Awful town. I went back recently, I was doing a house viewing. Uh, here's how bad the town has got. The local branch of McDonald's had boarded up and shut down. Do you know how shit you have to be for McDonald's to fail? 
it's McDonald's, bro. They're everywhere. I googled this. There is an open branch of McDonald's in the Sahara Desert. The Sahara Desert is more economically viable than Stevenage. There are starving African children in a McDonald's in the Sahara. And they, and they take a little one pound coin and they donate it in a little spinny, 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 spinny. And then it goes down to help children in Stevenage. <laughs> That time. My mother, my mother was uh, real thrilled with the idea. You know, she was like, uh, "Oh, son, if you get a flat in Stevenage, then I'll get to see you every single day." And uh, that's when I bought a flat in Croydon because I would literally rather die. Now, <laughs> it's interesting. Well, I've lived in Croydon for a few years now, two, three years. Uh, I've been renting there. It's interesting when you rent in a shit neighborhood because when you're renting in a shit neighborhood. You want the neighborhood to stay shit so the rent stays low. You know? Like when I was renting in Croydon, anything bad that happened to Croydon was <sighs> Like when I was renting in Croydon, I fucking loved knife crime. I loved stabbings, I loved murders, I loved all that shit. They're not slashing throats, they're slashing prices. <laughs> If anyone's making a killing, it's me. <laughs> it's your boy. Every night I'd come home, I'd turn on the news. There's been a stabbing in South London. I was like, yes. It was in Peckham. I was like, fuck. What a waste of a young life. But... Now that I own property in Croydon, I'm on a mission to get as many white women to gentrify Croydon as quickly as I can. The coach is waiting outside. You're all coming with me, okay? I've got a brand new routine now. Every weekend, I go on to Richmond, just looking for middle-class white women uh, to bring back to Croydon. Uh, just on the off chance they open a coffee shop on the way home, you know? Or adopt me, whatever happens first. And, I don't fuck these girls, I'm not that kind of guy. You know, I just come up, I come up to them and to convince them, I come up to them and I have Taylor Swift tickets and I... <laughs> <laughs> come on, Phoebe, come on. <laughs> we have Etsy, come on. <laughs> Can you imagine if a white lady did that joke about black people? Like, how quickly, she... <laughs> how quickly she'd lose her career? <laughs> Do you imagine if Catherine Ryan came on stage like, come on, Jamal, I have a dad. I don't have one, so I can do that joke. I'm, uh, I'm moving in with my girlfriend, uh, which is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting. Uh, does anyone here live with their partners? Woo! You sound thrilled. <laughs> I'm a little bit scared of moving in with her, I'm not gonna lie. Like, uh, I love her and I, I think it's gonna be very, very nice to live with together, but uh, I just uh, like a bit of secrecy, you know? And uh, when, you, when you live together, there's no secrets. Uh, secrets are fun, because they keep, they keep the part of you that's really you, you. You know, you know, you know that shit you carry to the fucking grave? <laughs> that's you, that's the real you. Like, I'll give you an example. Uh, very early in the relationship, uh, she was over mine, and she was looking for her earrings to go home, you know? So she's looking around my room, she's looking around, looking around, looking around, looking around, and then she looks under my bed, which is a horrible place to look. <laughs> and under my bed, she found a uh, sex toy called a fleshlight. Now, uh, for those of you who don't know what a fleshlight is, and that is knowing laughter, miss, thank you very much. <laughs> Without being too graphic, a flashlight, uh, it is just the best. So... <laughs> she was like, hey, you like that, you fucking nerd? You're a little fucking nerd. I was like, yes, I fucking am. And she made fun of me, it felt bad. But cut to about two, three weeks ago, I was over hers and I needed some socks to go home, you know? So I was looking for a sock drawer, looking for a sock drawer, and I found her dildo. And uh, I felt like King Arthur pulling the sword out of the rock. <laughs> Excelsior! <laughs> what is this we have here? And she said, that is your replacement, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's too quick, my girl. 
I love her to death. My girlfriend, she's from a, a small town in, uh, in Scotland. And so, uh, you know, we, we like to go to a lot of our restaurants together in London, our fancy restaurants. You know, there's, there's a very cute moment that happened quite recently in an Asian restaurant. I like this moment. So uh, she's uh, walking to the toilet because uh, she has cerebral palsy. And she's just walking to the <laughs> that, Yeah, that never, that never gets a laugh. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> she's walking to the toilet, right? That's when she chose to get up. She's walking to her toilet. <laughs> Irony. She's walking to the toilet. At him too. <laughs> Could you imagine if they fucked? Anyway. So I, <laughs> I go, <laughs> Don't worry, he's ugly. But she's <laughs> No, and I can say that because look at me. I, I <laughs> my girlfriend. <laughs> she's walking to the toilet. <laughs> And then halfway to the toilet, she turns around and she gives me the finger. It was cute, right? <laughs> but there was a Chinese international student working at the Asian restaurant. And uh, she just saw uh, the finger. She didn't clock that we were a couple. And so she's just seen a random white woman <laughs> give the middle finger <laughs> to a random black man <laughs> who is now rather upset. So she looks at me like, are you two? And I was like, no. <laughs> She's racist. <laughs> and that's how you get a free meal. Fuck Marcus Rashford. That's... <laughs> that's how real niggas eat. My girl... <laughs> girl, she's world class, you know. I love her to death. Uh, I took her to a uh, family wedding uh, in January. And it was a big deal taking her to a family wedding. Because my grandparents... They're still not amazing about uh, me being in an interracial couple, you know? Like, uh, they never called her my girlfriend to this day. They're always like, uh, ah, Tatiwa, it is you and your friend. <laughs> like we're a gay couple in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> my girlfriend, she showed a lot of courage to go, you know? And uh, here's the thing, uh, Zimbabwean weddings, they're very dull affairs. It's just a bunch of uh, hymns in Shona the whole way through. My girlfriend, she checked out. So I made up a fun little drinking game. I was like, hey, Kath, if you guess the lyrics to this song, we'll get it in the ballpark. Uh, I'll take a shot. Completely fuck it up. You take a shot. So, song starts. It goes, Hakuna uh, wakaita sa Jesu. It means there is no one quite like Jesus. What a tune. Top fucking 40. <laughs> song starts. My girlfriend goes, I know this one. Hakuna matata. <laughs> it means no worries. And then she gave me a look as if to say, drink up, dickhead. <laughs> Are you insane? Do you think we actually sing The Lion King <laughs> at African weddings, you Scottish prick? What the fuck? What's wrong with you? What do you think happens at Chinese weddings? Do they sing Mulan the whole way through? <laughs> They're about to fuck for the first time. The groom kicks down the door like, let's get down to business. <laughs> I love that girl, she's a girl worth fighting for, you know? <laughs> I do love her to death, you know. Uh, we reached an interesting age. Uh, I'm about to turn 27, uh, which is 83 in Leonardo DiCaprio years. And so, uh, all of our friends have started posting the baby pictures online, and uh, my girlfriend is getting a bit broody, you know? Uh, here's the, I think she'll be a great mum one day, and uh, I want to be a dad one day too. It's just that uh, I have really bad asthma, and she has really bad asthma. When we fuck, it sounds like a COVID ward. Like, <sighs> 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 I get a boner when I see a ventilator. Do you understand how bad my asthma is? So if we have children together, it's basically like breeding pugs. <laughs> but it is what it is, you know? <laughs> I just don't want our routine to change, you know? We have such a wonderful routine, you know? Even in the bedroom, she always initiates, you know? She's always like, uh, oh, I get in my billy, don't you? <laughs> Come in my swamp, oh. <laughs> And then I walk in. I'm like, I got a name, Shrek. Come on, we're gonna call me donkey. Come on, Shrek. <laughs> That's me, Trick, that's me! <laughs> it's a wonderful routine. <laughs> However, the 
The other day, we found out a fact. This is true. There is a man called Ian Smith. He is a former prime minister of Zimbabwe back when it was Rhodesia. He was integral in keeping my nation colonized. Now, he's from a tiny town in Scotland, uh, same town as my girlfriend. We did an ancestry test, and it turns out that they are related. Yeah. And, uh, do you know how good it feels to fuck her now? <laughs> that I know that? Every time I come, I'm like, Wakanda forever. <laughs> this is the best. <laughs> She's like, choke me. I'm like, gladly you wad your presa, okay? <laughs> Shh. <laughs> Hakuna Matata. <laughs> you guys have been sensational. I've been tired. Follow me on Instagram. Please.